Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review, this Hongdian N11 Blue Rhombus. But Professor Doug, you might ask, what is a rhombus? Well, since you asked, a rhombus is a very special type of bus. Another one rides the bus, sir. Another one rides the bus. No, not that kind of bus. And not the kind of bus you need to ride if you wear a helmet to play chess. Vince Clortho, key master of Gozer. According to this, his name's Lewis Tully. Lives on Central Park West. A rhombus is a four-sided polygon where all the sides are equal length and the angles are not 90 degrees, which would make it a square. Don't be square, be a rhombus. Don't be a... A rhombus is an equilateral, quadrilateral, or a diamond shape like in the playing card suit. But Professor Doug, a baseball diamond is a square, but it's called a diamond. You are correct, sir. It is called a square, but that's because baseball is stupid. Don't call me stupid. Oh, right! To call you stupid would be an insult to stupid people! But you think you're an intellectual, don't you, ape? Apes don't read philosophy. Yes, they do, Otto. They just don't understand it. The infield in baseball is a square measuring 90 feet on all sides and the angles are all 90 degrees. So it is actually a baseball square, not a baseball diamond. But I think I know why it's always been called a diamond. That's because of an optical illusion. When you look at a baseball field from a slightly above and behind, the optical illusion of perspective makes the infield look diamond shaped. That's my story, I'm sticking to it. But I digress. This Hongdian N11 Blue Rhombus has a diamond shaped pattern on the anodized aluminum barrel and cap. Let's take a look at this beautiful diamond shaped metal pen right now. And yet another bag of pens. Let's see what's inside. One, two, and three pens. And finally, we have a metal Hongdian. And this is the N11. This is in a diamond pattern, a turquoise kind of anodized aluminum. Gray Hongdian nib. That's interesting. Usually metal sections are slippery. This doesn't feel slippery. And this is one of those upscale converters the metal reinforced nipple and the nice thing is that you can take them apart to clean them out and surprisingly this is not a heavy pen yeah it doesn't post very well so this is not a pen that I would post but that's a very nice pattern so I've got a few ideas about what ink to go in this so the Hongdian N11 I'll show the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Overall, the N11 is an anodized aluminum pen with flat top and bottom finials and this beautiful repeating diamond pattern. It has what looks like ruthenium trim as the clip, cap band, and top and bottom finials are quite dark. The anodized aluminum, what Hongdian calls blue, is actually very much a blue-green turquoise color. The camera doesn't show turquoise very well. It shows up as blue. This is much greener under my eye than under my camera. The overall look of the pen is quite lovely. The N11 is also available in two other colors, green and white. And it has two other geometric patterns. A spiral pattern they are calling twill, and a flat-sided pattern they are calling polygon. I don't know how many sides the polygon version has, but they'd better not be eight-sided because Caveco has the octagon under copyright. I've heard they've sent every stop sign in the world a cease and desist order. And while the shape is in litigation, it's open season at intersections everywhere. But I digress again. It's like deja vu all over again. From the top, we see a slightly curved medallion on the top finial. The rhombus pattern metal cap is straight to the cap ring, which has a top and bottom ringed border, a stippled background middle, and two rectangular cartouches, one which says LT Hongdian on the front and the model number N11 on the back. The rhombus pattern ends with a lip on both the cap 
and the top of the barrel. We'll get to that in a moment. The teardrop shaped ruthenium colored metal clip extends from the cap and is nicely springy and usable. The barrel is straight almost to the end where it tapers down to a matching ruthenium colored plated metal end finial. The cap unscrews with a little more than half a turn to reveal the ruthenium colored. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Okay, I'm just getting a little bit tired of saying all this verbiage. From now on, if I say gold, silver, platinum, palladium, ruthenium, or chrysanthemum, let's stipulate that I mean the color, not the real material. If by chance the material is actually gold, silver, platinum, et al., I will indicate it as such by saying such things as 14K, 18K, 21K gold, or gold filled, or 925 silver, and the like. This should be common sense, but nonsense has trumped common sense in the world, and certainly on the internet in recent years. But common sense used to tell you that if a pen was $30 and I say it has gold trim, don't for a second believe that I mean real gold trim. It's just the color. Thank you. We now, ret we now return you to our regularly scheduled pen review. We return you now to your regularly scheduled program. The ruthenium metal section, which has three grooves and a small flare towards the number six size steel ruthenium colored nib and black plastic feed. Let's get a closer look at this nib. The nib matches the ruthenium color of the rest of the trim, and the engraving has a Hongdian geometric pattern with a teardrop shaped breather hole. Since 1997, Hongdian and F in brackets for fine and 35 for the length of the nib. Having the length of the nib is really useful if you're wanting to swap nibs. Not all number six size nibs are created equal. The number six indicates the width of the feed at the base, but the length will allow you to ensure your replacement nib won't get ground up and twisted inside the cap if it's too long. The nib and feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for swapping or maintenance. The section unscrews to reveal the included Chinese standard converter, which is branded Hongdian, on the sleeve. This converter has a reinforced nipple and that sleeve can be unscrewed to clean the converter out completely. Really nice feature. The inside of the cap shows no step or cap seal apparent, but since the entire inside of the cap is black plastic, including the cap threads, I assume this should provide an adequate seal for the nib. The cap doesn't post in any way usable. It's pretty wonky on there and won't stay on. Unposted, the pen is very comfortable and well balanced in the hand and surprisingly light. Those cap threads are smooth and unobtrusive, but that aforementioned lip at the top of the barrel there does have an edge you can feel if you grip your pen high. It's not sharp, but it's noticeable. I bought this pen from Sally's Easy Buy shop on Etsy. It's currently listed for about $30 US, and the nib options are EF and F. The fine nib is closer to a medium, as you'll see in the writing sample. But first, let's look at some size comparisons. Here is the Hongdian 911 Blue Rhombus with a Pen BBS 380 in silver velvet, a Hongdian A6 Skeleton Piston Filler, an Asvine P80 Piston Filler, and a Moonman TI-500 Titanium Piston Filler. The reviews for the Hongdian A6 and the Asvine P80 are coming soon. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. The only one of this group of metal pens that posts well is the Moonman TI-500. You can see the review of this interesting pen from Moonman by clicking right up here. I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this pen. I love the look and feel and that it's a piston filler, but hate the fact that the designers seem to have gone out of their way to keep me from taking this pen apart. I was able to replace that awful nib that came with it with this nib from a Parker Vector, but the piston and the feed seem to be inaccessible. I thought with the new Asvine multifunction wrench, I might have something that might fit it, since Asvine and Moonman, um, well, how do I say that? They're pretty much identical. But no such luck. So I'm going to try to grind one of these to see if it will fit. Be 
between writing and filming this episode, I went to my Dremel grinder and ground this Asvine multifunction wrench so it would fit the Moonman TI-500 piston mechanism. I took about 0.25 millimeters on each side of this opening there and then ground it flat to make it a little bit thinner and take off any burrs. And now it works like a charm. So all you people out there who own one of these Moonman TI-500 fountain pens, just buy one of these Asvine wrenches or purchase an Asvine piston pen and make sure you tell your retailer you want them to include the wrench. Just a little bit of touch grinding and patience and you'll be able to disassemble and clean your pen like any other piston filler again. And the Moonman TI-500 seems to have disappeared from the marketplace anyway. Let me know in the comments if you have one of these. So I've left the caps off of these three pens here because they really don't stay on. This one stays on on the Pen BBS 380, but it's not a terrific poster. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. And as you can see, they're plenty long enough to write with comfortably unposted. The Pen BBS 380 came with both a fountain pen tip and a rollerball tip. Currently, I have it configured as a rollerball. Now let's look at some measurements, and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the... Hongdian N11 Blue Rhombus and it has a number six size steel fine nib. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet and the nib is very smooth with a good amount of feedback and this is the delightful kind of feedback not the scratchy kind of feedback and it feels like a pencil on vellum and the ink is J. Urbain I believe that's how you pronounce it Emerald de Chivar I'm sure that's not how you pronounce that I think that color is a perfect match for this pen. And again, the ink is a lot greener than it looks on camera. I usually have reservations about using Gerbin Emerald de Chavour because of the amount of particulate in this gorgeous emerald color. But I decided to try my PDDSS FEIFF or Professor Doug's Double Secret Sauce for Efficacious Ink Flow Fluid on the pen before I inked it up. I took the nib out of the section, attached the converter to it, and filled and expelled the secret sauce elixir, and then dried it with a tissue. Then I filled it again with Emerald of Chavour, and I'm seeing plenty of shimmer with no signs of clogging. As to line variation, this is another really nice surprise about this nib. I'm getting some. It's already a fairly thick line for a fine, uh, but I'm going to close up on this. Look at the amount of bounce on this nib. I'm still guessing that this nib is steel and it's coated or plated with something to make it resemble a titanium nib. If this were titanium, two things. It would be more expensive and Hongdian would have advertised it as such. But it's a very, very pleasant nib indeed. And this nib makes a 0.5, almost a 0.6 millimeter line which is a Western fine or a Japanese fine to medium on my Richard Binder line width chart, which you can find linked in the description below. And as for our quote, and for some reverse writing, just a touch toothier, but it actually keeps up and is very thin and dry. And some quick writing.
no issues whatsoever. It's very, very wet. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Again, Hongdian surprised me. I'm buying up all the new models they've released in the last month, and there's a plethora of them. The A6, D5, M1, N9, N10, N11, and N12. Can't wait for the N13. Most of these pens never really appealed to me. This one, the N11, is a metal pen with a shiny metal section. It's really not my cup of tea. However, the emerald color appeals to me. The anodized aluminum finish has a lovely feel to it. I love the diamond rhombus pattern that makes the pen fascinating when it's twirled. And I really like the dark ruthenium-like colored hardware and nib. I was totally surprised by this nib. When the options were only E, F, and F, I kind of rolled my eyes, bit my lip, and said, well, all right, here we go with another thin, unpleasant, dry, and scratching, fine Chinese steel nib that I'll just have to swap out. But when I put this nib to paper, not only was it very smooth, but the light friction feedback that feels like a pencil on paper, well, that took me by surprise, and I was really delighted. And the unexpected bounce on that nib was another nice surprise. I already did the top 10 of 2023 yesterday, and you can see that video by clicking right up here. But this pen will be a contender for 2024, I'm sure. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel too for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. for watching and that's all she wrote I made this